It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming out and listening to everyone. And it's always wonderful to see uh, everyone in the flesh. Uh, we spend so much time on the internet together, but getting together and talking face to face is super helpful. Uh, <clears throat> so today I'll be talking about a softer topic that uh, I haven't really discussed a whole lot, but it's sort of a hot topic in uh, crypto communities. And, uh, you know, I think that it's worthy of some discussion. So um, how do we move past crypto tribalism? Um, <clears throat> is that going to flip? Okay. Okay, perfect. Thanks. I'll just say next slide. Okay, so di quick disclaimer. Uh, these are all my personal opinions, uh, and uh, you know, perhaps you don't agree, but that's okay. And I'd love to talk to you more about these ideas uh, after. And um, also, you know, I think our hive mind is strong here, so feel free to engage and, and join the discussion. <coughs> Next slide. Uh, so, you know, tribalism has a lot of scopes. Um, it's pretty general. It's a natural part of humanity. Uh, we naturally congregate into groups and uh, struggle for power, for influence, whether it's, uh, next slide, uh, monetary systems, uh, fiat versus crypto, uh, next slide, uh, political systems, um, you know, all of these various polarizing topics are tribes sort of warring against each other. Next slide. Uh, hemispheres, there's a lot of talk about this in uh, EOS and crypto because there's very different cultural uh, dynamics at play between uh, Eastern communities and Western communities. Next slide. Um, so what is crypto tribalism? Uh, I'll start with my definition of tribalism, uh, which is simply groups uh, banding together, forming relational bonds with a shared collective interest, uh, and working together to sort of further that interest. Um, you know, it's culturally transmitted. People are born into tribes. We all have various cultural aspects that we're from. Uh, and, you know, it's basically interest to cooperate together. Uh, but it can devolve into cooperating together against others. So um, crypto tribalism then is this phenomena of factional groups competing for power and influence within open source crypto communities. Um, yep, next slide. So why is this a problem if it's human nature and we all do it and, uh, you know, what's, what's so wrong with that? Um, next slide. So, you know, it's divisive. Uh, we're a pretty small open source community. Like, there's tons of adoption happening, but, you know, drop in the bucket compared to the world population. Uh, and, you know, sometimes our narratives cancel each other out if, if we're sort of um, not necessarily doing uh, intellectually rigorous work to understand what other groups within the industry are working on and thus just sort of blanket labeling each other as this or that. Uh, and so this slows innovation because rather than cherry picking the best ideas from each faction or group, uh, we're sort of just siloing and staying in our own echo chambers and not working together as much as we could. Uh, and I think that causes us to lose sight of w what's important and why we came here in the first place. So next slide. <laughs> yeah, so I'll take it a step back and just mention, you know, my own journey as through crypto tribalism. Uh, so I started out as bit curious uh, in college. And, uh, you know, as a lot of us heard, what is this new money? It's like fluctuating in value a lot. It's based on some interesting uh, computer science. It's sort of at the edge of technology. Uh, eventually, a friend in college introduced me to BitShares, and I just like fell down the rabbit hole and became a BitShares maximalist in a sense. Uh, it's like, this is amazing. It's so awesome. It's like, how can, why isn't everyone seeing this? Um, am I crazy? Probably. Um, you know, oh my god, DeFi. They didn't even call it DeFi back then, but DeFi. Um, you know, and took a little hiatus, came back to st when Steam came out and realized, wow, this is amazing. Like, we're 
distributing value very liquidly to all of these participants. And this is really what has interested me in crypto from the beginning. So uh, loved Steam, eventually sort of drifted away, um, you know, and studied Ethereum because I was like, my initial hypothesis is wrong. Uh, I thought, you know, BitShares is definitely gonna just consume Ethereum and like it was so much better, but in reality it didn't. <laughs> And so, you know, that was a bad hypothesis. And so, you know, I started dabbling and learning uh, about these other things. And uh, today I'm an EOSIO practitioner, but I believe, you know, each of these projects with their different design decisions have various uh, advantages. So next slide, please. So um, no problem. Yeah, I've come a long way. This is the BitShares mobile. Uh, we, did the BitShares peer-to-peer -peer road trip in uh, 2015. All these guys are part of different projects now. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was really fun, but you know, this is our tribe. So next slide, please. <coughs> um, so uh, we did things in Detroit with a chain agnostic approach from the beginning. And you know, there's always been interest in cryptocurrency in Detroit, uh, but we decided we were going to go a step further and found some organizations and, you know, get out there and engage our community. Uh, so, you know, we started congregating through various meetup groups. Uh, Detroit Blockchainers was sort of the main hub, and that was designed with a chain agnostic focus and uh, fostered this culture of learning from one another. So there's people from Ethereum and Bitcoin Private and all of these other projects just coming and sort of you know, giving what they had to contribute so we could all learn together. Um, and eventually, you know, we realized we liked doing this and formed our own organization, EOS Detroit. Um, but also another organization was formed and uh, there's some overlap, but the Detroit Blockchain Center came a little later. Uh, that is more focused on actual uh, social impact work and is also chain agnostic. So we can act as a neutral advocacy group. Uh, and so, you know, working together and learning from each other allowed us to cover a lot more ground and we've got pretty good seeds planted there now. Next slide. Uh, so, why did we start EOS Detroit? Next slide. Um, you know, basically, I wanted to give back to uh, these awesome communities that gave to me. Uh, you know, S Steam and otherwise, very therapeutic, learned a lot. Um, and we wanted to also make, establish Detroit as a hub. Uh, so, you know, how could we actually deploy this technology in our city and uh, help build out good use cases, help inform people, uh, and prepare people for this new paradigm? Uh, so, you know, we're also interested in some grassroots initiatives there with uh, wireless internet and local currency. So, moving on. Um, so, I wanted to ask you all to... Uh, answer this prompt. Why did crypto choose you? Next slide. Um, you can tweet it. I'm just really curious what got you all into crypto and why you're here. Um, next slide. Moving on, some of my own personal motivations for being here. Next slide. Uh, you know, all of the things we can do with this amazing technology, rebalancing power, um, making existing processes work better, making money off the business opportunity. Next slide. Uh, freedom, you know, having the sovereignty over our value, being able to help people and distribute value more prolifically, and uh, just pure curiosity in how technology works. Next slide, please. Um, so I think to move past crypto tribalism, we need a shift in our mindset, and we need to think of the whole industry as one giant tribe. Uh, next slide. And so, you know, this involves sort of harnessing your ego a bit and widening your perspective and, and thinking, you know, there's something everyone who's working in our industry has to offer. Next slide. Uh, so if we broaden our perspective, we can cherry pick the best ideas from all of the various networks. Next slide. And become uh, a larger group together. And this is important because it allows us to accelerate the pace of innovation and thus get to our goals faster together and with higher efficacy. Next slide. So what do I suggest uh, for us to do this? Well, you know, let's take a look inward at how we treat each other 
inclusion and respect are important. Um, you know, assuming good faith, not assuming each other are scammers or whatever else. Um, listening for the meaning someone's trying to convey, not necessarily their word choice, because we all kind of process words differently. Next slide. Um, you know, finding common threads between what we're trying to accomplish together, whether that's um, our passion for seeking solutions, uh, excitement for building on uh, various projects like EOSIO, or just love for freedom-enabling technology. Next slide. Uh, I'm a bit over time, but almost done here. Um, so also casting a wider network, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, time's up. So. Uh, basically, the idea is we're going to go farther if we work together. Next slide. Um, you know, leveraging interoperability is sort of the next phase of our industry. Next slide. Um, a lot of great technologies, DAP network, EOSIO, um, allow us to start to build these interoperable solutions. Next slide. Um, so, you know, I'll leave you with this. Um, cosmopolitanism is actually the belief in one uh, global community. Uh, and we're here at the Cosmo, and I'd like to challenge everyone to, you know, find someone they haven't met and make a new friend. And uh, perhaps someone outside of your project circle, and, uh, you know, let's start sharing this knowledge and uh, moving our industry forward quicker. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Um, we're on social. You can follow us on these various social networks if you want to talk more. Thank you. And what was the hashtag again for the question? Oh, right. Uh, hashtag why crypto chose me. Why crypto chose me. If and you guys then, wanted to answer that question while we're setting up for this next panel, just tweet it at EOS Detroit there. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks.